Hello, I'm Alexandra Guadano and I'm here with Janie Lundy, who is the Director of HR Shared Services at the NEC Corporation. Janie's here to talk with us a little bit about bringing new functions into your Shared Services Center. But before we jump into that, Janie, can you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Sure. I've been with NEC Corporation of America for about 11 years now. Uh, my role is Director of HR Shared Services, as you share, and in that department I have about five departments. I've got payroll, HRIS, uh, sales comp, and compensation, and the benefits department. Okay, thank you. So how does a company know when it's the right time to expand and bring new functions into the Shared Services Center? A company will know often when it's time to bring on new uh, shared services opportunities in the shared services department. When they begin to want an economy of scales, they want some efficiencies. A lot of times that happens during a merger and an acquisition as well. At that time, you generally have companies that you brought on. They already have an HR department that have those functions going on between benefits or payroll, and they might need to downsize to some degree. Uh, they'll share resources, they'll maybe realign talent, and they'll bring on uh, those roles at the other company into their environment. Hmm. So what do you see as the main advantage of moving HR processes under a shared services model? In a shared services model, when you begin to bring individuals over, you can, you can establish uh, subject matter experts. You've got individuals that are responsible for these departments. Um, that understand, for example, payroll. You've got people that understand taxes and so forth and the compliance issues. In benefits, you've got people that understand COBRA regulations and so forth. By bringing individuals into the shared services modules, you establish subject matter experts. Um, so how would you define the higher quality that many companies seek when they're implementing their shared services center? When people begin to bring um, shared services centers on board, they're looking for a higher quality, and that higher quality is measurements that include an ROI. Uh, they're looking for a return for that investment. They're hoping that they can decrease cost. Um, they can bring on additional headcount, and a lot of times you can bring on 500 additional employees, and you don't have to add an additional resource in your HR department. So which services did you start out by moving into your shared services center and what was the decision making process behind that? At our company at NEC, one of the reasons that we had to move into a shared services environment is because we had multiple NEC companies that we were supporting and they had multiple FEIN numbers. And in that organization, at the different NEC organizations, what was happening is you had these different departments. So you had two managers of payroll and two managers of benefits and two managers of HRIS. And by bringing them into one shared services environment, it allowed us to expand our services again without increasing headcount. And then, so we started small. Mm -hmm. We started with what sometimes people call it the low hanging fruit. We started with payroll. We started with HRS and eventually we brought on benefits and eventually we brought on comp and kind of moved from there, brought on more departments. So I know you mentioned starting small is a really good way to launch into your shared services center right. implementation. Um, how did you prepare and lay a strong foundation for this? We took a look at the, the talent. Uh, we took a look at the individuals in each of these departments, basically created a talent profile. We understood what experience that they had at former companies as well as the experience that they had at the current company. Uh, they had been involved with different projects and so forth, and if they had the talent and the expertise, or we seen an opportunity for them to grow, then we were able to bring them into the model and expand their role as well. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know a little bit more about the steps that it actually took you to incorporate all of these new functions. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the practices that your company has used in order to do that? Well, recently, um, it's, it's been a little bit of time since we brought on the main departments. Right now we're getting ready to bring on a new function in the shared services environment and that includes talent management. So we're going to start taking a look at succession, hypos, high performing individuals, right? Uh, we're going to build career paths for them and what we had to do is we had to go out and take a look at our organization and we had multiple titles. From all the mergers and acquisitions that had gone on, we found our title structure wasn't quite um, 
in line with what market said it should be. So we leveled out our organization and, and every employee got a job level and they were either in a business support or they were in a professional category or they were in a manager category. And after we began to identify what role each job description would play, then we shared with them by doing this and by taking someone from a general manager to a director title, the next thing would be to build that career path for them. So now we're starting to take a look again deeper into the job descriptions and what are the competencies around it and we're going to link all of that together um, with our talent management strategy within the shared services department and give every employee an opportunity to either grow laterally or horizontally within the company. Wonderful. So can you talk a little bit more about the value that you see in bringing these employee relations functions under the shared services center for your company in the long run? What will happen as we bring our employee relations uh, into the shared services model, when an employee has an issue, if it's an issue with their benefits and so forth, we're able to go to our benefits manager within the shared services environment or maybe her senior in the department, and they're able to go and take a look at that employee's profile. What's the question? Is it because uh, maybe we've had to severance them out and they need to enroll in some sort of COBRA? arrangement for themselves or for an extension of their family. We know their, their profile already. That individual is a subject matter expert within the benefits department and they're able to provide the right guidance to them or if they're going out on leave, what they can tell us versus what they can't tell us. Right. So that sounds really great conceptually. Um, how do you actually measure the success of your shared services function to validate this business case that you've just presented? And what analytics or metrics do you use to measure this performance? I think it's important that you measure throughout the year. And we have those processes at our organization. Uh, you can start with benchmarks, best practices. You involve yourself with several surveys. If it's your compensation department, as an example, you need to make sure that you're paying competitively. You need to take a look at what you're paying your employees against, again, the competitors. Because what you don't want is for the employees to leave and they're leaving because they're saying that your pay isn't correct. So one way to measure is to make sure that you're in, you, you participate in multiple surveys. You can also do some benchmarks. What's happening in a shared services environment? What sort of functions are actually in a shared services department as well? And then another thing that we do is we, we take a look at every type of paper that comes across our desk and what we've been busy doing is automating self-service functionality and manager self-service. Uh, and we do that by how many address changes are coming in, how many direct deposit changes are coming in, and then we go out and we try to build a tool that allows us to stop doing the duplication of the entry. The employee's entering it, or maybe someone in the HR manager side is entering it, and then they're moving it over into the to, in our role, we, we move it over into the HRS department. So you've got an employee filling out a form who's making a copy and turning it in, and then we've got somebody entering it in on our side. You want to eliminate that. And while we, while we report back, every again, every form that comes in, we start taking a look at where the volume is, and then we build a tool that allows us to eliminate it. I see. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, sure. Janie. It was a pleasure to have you here. Once again, I'm Alexandra Guadano, and thank you for joining us. Until next time. Thank you.